Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another Arcade's voice acting. Some of you may remember how blown away I was when I did my research on Michael Bell because I discovered he had been present in a lot more media I consumed growing up than I originally thought, like his portrayal of my namesake Raziel in the Legacy of Kane video games franchise. I was wondering if or when it would happen again, and it just did. With the announcement of Studio Series 86 Perceptor, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to research his voice actor, Paul Eiding, and I found out he's been in some of the most interesting things I've enjoyed over the years. I have to say it makes producing these spotlight a lot more fun when it happens. Allow me to introduce you to this fantastic actor who is one of the most diverse performer I've had the pleasure to work on. Born on March 28, 1957 in Cleveland, Ohio, not much is known of Paul's youth other than he was a music major but began acting, directing and writing when he was in the military. Singing and playing bass in a band while serving, he directed the 3rd Infantry Marnie Glee Club in Germany. The band also did some acts, and while reading some improv sketch for their show, fellow band member John Hancock, whom you may know from his work on Roots, told Paul that this is what he should be doing, acting. So Paul did. He considers himself a theater actor first, but also directed shows in Ohio, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and California. Alongside his theater career, he created comedy sketches for Minneapolis Brave New Workshop and contributed to the National Public Radio All Things Considers as a writer and actor. He also did a lot of commercials and voiceover until he moved to Los Angeles. While performing three characters in a play there, he was discovered by Gordon Hunt from Hanna-Barbera and started doing voice work for Saturday morning cartoons. Now let's take a look at Paul's roles and see if you can find something in there that will blow you away like it did me. Throughout his career he always did theater, even to this day, playing way too many roles to list here. But on camera in the 80s he did various small roles and guest stars in a lot of TV movies and series, like in Hardcastle and McCormick, Riptide, Simon and Simon, Best Defense, Trapper John MD, Straight Hawk, and The Twilight Zone. He did get a recurring role on The Charmings as Don King of the Carpets Miller. In the 90s, you might have seen him on Doogie Howser MD, Madhouse, Murphy Brown, Picket Fences, Biodome, and The Drew Carey Show. Star Trek fans will know him as Ambassador Loquel from the episode Liaison. After that, he did mostly cartoon and video games voice work, while continuing his stage acting. His voiceover list is much more extensive. So let's start with what we all loved and then I'll show you my pick of his best work. As you know, in season 2 of the Transformers, he was everyone's favorite microscope, Perceptor. Legend has it, it wiped out entire races of robots, like the Black Plague did to humans. It's cosmic rust. Perceptor is one of the few season 2 Autobots to get a movie appearance. Ultra Magnus, a cursory evaluation of Decepticon capability indicates a distinct tactical deficiency. And he kept being featured in season 3 of the show. What in the name of Alpha Trion? On top of this fan favorite character, he was the Quintesson judge in the episode The Quintesson Journal. A large fleet of Quintesson transport vessels were sold to Tixlara. He was also the voice of Deceptitran. Because that is my programming! <laughs> and Zebop Scandana. I think this is where his band singing days really helped. Allegra! Where are you going? In Sky Commander, you heard him as Raid Wrath. And on Toxic Crusader, you knew him as the voice of Nozone. In the animated movie Once Upon a Forest, he portrayed Abigail's father. And in the series The Thick, you heard him as Gazunatan. Gazunatan. Gazuntitan. Gazuntitan. Which I probably mispronounced. Then my mind exploded when I found out he worked on a game I've played countless hours on since its release in 1996, which I still play from time to time, Diablo. He did the narration for the game. Hail and sacrifice to Diablo, Lord of Terror and Destroyer of Souls. He was also the voice of the warrior. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. The healer Pepin. Griswold knows as much about the art of war as I do about the art of healing. The Archbishop Lazarus. Abandon your foolish quest. All that awaits you is the wrath of my master. And the Cursed Knight Lagdanon. Please, don't kill me. Just hear me out. I was once captain of King Leoric's knights. 
He also did the narration for Diablo 2, and also lent his voice to Mephisto. While on the Diablo 3 expansion, Reaper of Souls, he did a lot of additional voices. Another Blizzard franchise he worked on was StarCraft, voicing Alderis, and then in StarCraft 2, he voiced Executor and Overmind. And a third Blizzard franchise he worked on was the third installment of the Warcraft series, yet another game I played until recently, where we heard him as Verimetras and Gul'dan. One of his most recognized performances is Colonel Roy Campbell from the Metal Gear Solid franchise, a role he reprised seven times, much to the delight of the fans, while also playing the Colonel for the game Super Smash Bros. Brawl in 2008. On the amazingly awesome show Avatar The Last Airbender, he was the voice of May's father and the three split personalities of Doc, Xu, and Bushi. He reprised both roles for video games adaptations of the show as well. On the God of War franchise, he portrayed Zeus, the Gravedigger, and Thesis. And then we hit 2005, where he would strike gold on a role beloved by so many younger fans when he took on the role of Max Tennyson from Ben 10. That's a role he would portray 12 times throughout the franchise on various TV shows and video games, as well as playing 32 other characters across all of those. Paul has been working with another game company I played many hours on their games, Bethesda. Starting with Fallout 3, he was the voice of Nathan, Abraham Washington, and Three Father Birch. Then on Fallout 4, he played the Voltec representative and Arlene Glass. He also worked on the Elder Scroll Online as Galmar Stonefist, Septimus Cygnus, and Feldir the Old. And in recent years, he worked on the DC animated movies Reign of Superman and The Death of Superman, lending his voice to Jonathan Kent. These are just some of the amazing characters this fantastic actor has done. Paul is comfortable on a theater stage, facing a camera, or speaking to a recording's boots microphone. He's covered all of the different acting mediums, and even wrote and directed various projects. And now he's also trying his end as an associate producer on an oncoming project, Aliens Anonymous, a TV series currently in post-production. Let's wish him the best of luck with that show. There is one more thing I want to share with you. From all of Paul's convention panels I watched, at one point he said he hates it when an actor complains about having to do conventions. He wants to tell them to shut up, since without fans, actors are nothing. He became an actor to affect people, doing conventions and discovering that something he did many years ago helped or touched someone in any way humbles him and inspires him to do his best work. He knows what we feel when we meet an idol, because it happened to him. While Paul was working on the Transformers, he met with the voice of kickback Clive Reville, a Broadway star who had played Fagin in the 1963 production of Oliver. Clive was one of his idols, and he was very happy to work with him. Years later, they reconnected at a convention, and Paul reminded Clive that at the time he was blown away to work with him. At that moment, Clive put his hands on Paul's shoulder and told him to close his eyes and sang for him the first verse of Fagin's song to pick a pocket or two. And Paul said it immediately took him back there with goosebumps all over. Therefore, when a kid asks him to do a line, he's more than happy to do so because he knows how much it means to them. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Paul Eiding's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really love reading you guys. And if you can, share the videos, it really does help the channel. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care!